Hello everyone and welcome back to Girls Got Game. This week we are back for episode two. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope everyone is doing well. This week we have a bit of a treat for you with an inside perspective on what it's like to be a Canadian athlete preparing for the Olympics during these strange times with all these ups and downs with the Tokyo Olympics. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our interviewee this week. It's my former teammate Leonora McKinnon. Liu is a British and Canadian citizen currently training in France, part of the Canadian national fencing team since 2014. She's competed at the 2015 Toronto Pan American Games and helped lead the Canadian women's EPE team to Pan American Championships in 2016, 17 and 18, winning gold in 2016. At her first Olympics in Rio 2016, Leo made it to the top 32 representing Canada, and this year she's training for Tokyo. Here's how she's dealing with the postponements and training during COVID. So, Leo, first of all, thank you so much for agreeing to have this interview today. I know you're very busy with your Olympic training. Just to start us off, how was your mindset different going from training for this Olympics to 2016? It's different. It's very weird because I think like in 2016, like we were, we knew what was happening. We knew it was going ahead. There was no like real drama going into 2016. The only kind of things that I had to worry about before, like I knew that I was qualified was the qualification. Um, and then after it was literally just, okay, like I've qualified and now it's just focusing on the competition itself and being as prepared as you can for that um whereas like now I feel like there's all this like are we gonna go ahead is it gonna happen it's already been postponed they said they're not gonna postpone it again um so I just think there's a lot more kind of going on whereas in 2016 it's a lot more simple Mm -hmm. and it's also like the knowledge that even if the games go ahead it's not going to be the same it's not gonna be a normal game yeah of course um, and no one really knows how it's going to be done or, like, completed. Um, so I think just there's, there's a lot more to kind of think about and a lot more kind of, not distractions, but just a lot more to, like, acknowledge and to deal with than there was in 2016. Do you think that has an effect on your training? So, like, when you're training, do you find you're focusing on some of those distractions versus, like, what you're doing in the moment? Like, almost trying to find a way to prepare for those when you're there? Not really, like, in training, but more when I have, like, my own downtime and, like, my relaxation time, your mind does Mm -hmm. tend to kind of wander a bit. Even if, um, like, I'm trying... I don't try to let myself think about it because I think it is um, not necessarily the best thing mentally to be thinking about all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's always going to be there no matter what. So it's just trying to deal with it and figuring out... The, like how to deal with it and just actually like thinking to yourself that you can only control what you can control and so you've got to stop trying to control the uncontrollables um and when like I kind of took that mindset it became a lot easier to deal with yeah absolutely um when you found out the olympics was postponed or when everything was kind of just up in the air mentally how did you deal with that news especially with the fact that you also had to deal with covid in your area as well um I think, like, I I think the first thing that I found out was that Canada were going to boycott the Olympics. So I woke up to that news because, obviously, like, when the Canadians announced it, it was um, the middle of the night in England. So I woke up in the morning to the news that Canada were boycotting the Olympics, and I didn't deal with that too well. I just kind of... I was very proud of Canada for taking their stand and, to like, being the country that led the way in the boycotting of the Olympics. But it also was, like, a disappointment... And kind of, like, grieving for my loss of the Olympics when other people were still going to have that. And so, like, on a personal note, like, I found it, like, quite hard that the idea that everybody else could still go and I couldn't. And then when they announced the um, mm. that the Olympics were going to be postponed, I think, like, I'd already gone kind of through the grieving part of that. Although, like, there was kind of mixed emotions. I was kind of, like... I guess like on a selfish note, I was kind of happy. I was like, okay, well now I get my chance again. There was also still a bit more grieving of, okay, it's definitely like, this is serious now. Like it has been postponed. Yeah. But then there was also that in terms of like for, for everyone, like for the community, for the public, for like just for everyone involved, that like that um, kind of this is the right thing to do. 
mm-hmm. that actually finally the people were like speaking sense and being like we need to put the public safety and public health mm. above sport yeah it's really it's really interesting how sport almost seemed like so invincible up until covid happened and sports shut down everyone kind of went into hiding and everything but since you've almost been given this extra time basically do you find that you're you're a little bit more hesitant and trying to pace yourself in your training or are you even more motivated now and training even harder because it's almost like you've been given like this opportunity to get even better Uh, yeah I definitely think like I have been given an opportunity to get better like I'm still quite young in terms of women's epe um there was that kind of I was doing really well up until covid I'd already got two last eights. I'd had my best season ever. And it kind of was like, actually, COVID kind of got in the way of, like, my my kind of climb breaking into the top. So, I mean, there was that kind of, like, this is really frustrating, actually, from a personal level, because I was on a roll. I was doing really well. And then you have that kind of, am I going to be back there in the next competition? But at the same time, this is just an opportunity to improve and to break into getting medals at competitions rather than just top eights. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just always trying, trying to look at the positives of things. So I'm just really thankful. Like, I'm not in a position where this is my last year. Like, I'm still young. No, that's so good to hear. I love the fact that you're not, that you're mentally dealing with this as as an opportunity and everything. I want to know when you get to the Olympics, what what do you think it's gonna feel like knowing that you've overcome everything that you've been through with COVID and Team Canada and living in France and England? Um, what what is something that you really want to feel in terms of like an accomplishment there? What's your what's your goal? It's a tough question. I don't know. <laughs> I'm always my biggest critic. Yeah. So I think, for me, I just want to feel like I've done my best because I know that unless I felt that way, I'm not going to be particularly happy. And that's just because I am always very harsh on myself Mm -hmm. and have always been. Ever since I was little and started fencing, I, I was always, like, my biggest critic. So I think, yeah, for me, it's just feeling that I've done my best and that I gave it my all and that, like, not feeling that I could have done something differently. That's that's a really good answer. I really like that. Picking up on that, something that you would have done differently through this whole process, is there something that you would go back and do differently? Anything you would go back and change that you think would put you in a better mindset and a better headspace um, going into the Olympics? I don't know if I'd done anything differently if I'd be in the same place that I am now. I feel like I've really come on a journey through all of this and um not just like a sporting journey but also just like a personal journey I think I like kind of really understood a lot about myself Mm -hmm. during this year last year and I don't think I would have done that if I'd done anything differently so in some ways like I feel like it was probably an annoying thing to have happened but probably like on a personal journey in me understanding myself it was probably quite a good thing to happen Mm -hmm. um yeah, I guess I could say that, like, I would have changed how I approached training back in, like, March and April. Here in Europe, no one really understood how bad it was going to be. And, like, we all thought lockdown was going to be, like, a month max. Mm-hmm. And that life would be back to normal by April or May. Um, And so, like, I really pushed myself and I tried to keep up training by myself. I did, like, four or five hours a day of training, which isn't sustainable every day when you're training alone. And so I did kind of reach a breaking point in terms of, like, my training, and I had to take a pause. Right. So, I mean, like, yeah, I, I guess I could have approached that better. But at the same time, like, if I hadn't have reached that breaking point in my training and, like, that burnout, I don't think I would have been on the same journey that I was on this year. Thank you. Okay, well, last question. Just if you had anything to say for anyone that was aspiring to go to the olympics or anyone who's going to even watch the olympics this year and watch fencing for the first time what would you say to them i think like my biggest piece of advice that i've kind of learned over my career is don't let anyone tell you you can't do it or don't let anyone tell you like no i got told a lot when i was younger that i was never gonna make it that i would never come to anything and despite all of that like i kept going and i just kept being like no you're wrong i am gonna make it i am like this is what I want to do. So I think like if it's something you enjoy and it's something you want to do, like go for it. Don't let people tell you no. Find a way to train. And if someone's telling you no, they're not the right people to have in your life. So I think that's probably like my biggest piece of advice for any aspiring athlete. I don't know, for people watching in the Olympics, I think like everyone's been on like a journey. So I think this Olympics is just gonna show like how people have kind of 
come out of this last year. I think it's going to be like a weird games and there could there's a potential that results are all going to be like twisted from what we've seen like two years ago. I think, yeah, just remember that like everyone's been on their own journey and everyone's going through a journey. We just don't know what it is. You can't always tell. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's amazing. Leo, again, thank you so much for taking the time to have this interview. Um, Girls Got Game is so lucky to have you on the podcast and can't wait to see you at the Olympics. No, thank you for asking me to come and talk. It's been a pleasure. All right, so that was my interview with uh, Leonora McKinnon. I call her Leo as she is my former teammate. I love her so much. I love listening to her accent. I just, she's, she has so much wisdom. And for me, when I was a younger fencer, I think I was 14 or 15 when I got invited to a high performance camp in Montreal. And that was uh, one of the first times that I met Leo. She was a senior fencer on the women's epe team. Also, if you don't know what epe is, um, it's fencing lingo. It's a type of fencing where you can hit any part of the body and get a point for it. Um, so it's very unique in that way. But um, anyways, so I got invited to this high performance camp when I was really young. I was the youngest there. And one of one of the ways that I guess I got to know the older girls was by rolling out their calves at the end of training days and so Leo always had these like huge knots on the back of her calves and I would always roll them out for her and then we kind of bonded over that and we were in Montreal I didn't speak a stick of French um so we went for like fondue together and stuff so that was really cool that was our first bonding experience together and ever since then she's been definitely one of the female Canadian fencers that I look up to and I think a lot of people on the national team look up to as well um, and I really miss her. I Just before I came to university I went to a training camp in France with her, uh, sorry in Spain with her and lived with her for a couple days in her place in France and trained there so i know her like situation in France and how dedicated she is to training there and so yeah I really admire her I hope everyone really enjoyed that interview um so yeah without further ado let's let's get into a little bit of a, a discussion about how we think the Tokyo Olympics are going to go are you guys are you guys excited for the Tokyo Olympics I know I am I've been waiting a long time um Elizabeth I know you're probably very excited for the gymnastics portion <laughs> Yeah, honestly, um, the Olympics, I live for the Olympics. They're my favorite sporting event by far. Uh, like, I almost started crying when I heard there was, like, a possibility they could be completely canceled. I really hope that doesn't happen because, like, I've been, I was already really upset last year when they got postponed and, like, because I just, I love the Olympics so much. They're mm -hmm. so amazing, like, you just see how much it means to the athletes because obviously, you know, big competitions like world championships and stuff like that is important, but you see completely different emotions from the athletes during the Olympics because you can, for a lot of athletes, that's a big milestone, like for every athlete basically. And like for some athletes, that's the end of their career. That's you know that's what they've been working for and it's just so amazing and just obviously there's sad moments too no one wants to perform badly at the olympics so there are sad moments too but i mean i just i love it i love every aspect of it and natasha like the interview was awesome and like just her story and how she's preparing for the olympics it's it's amazing and like yeah i just i'm so excited i hope they don't get canceled yeah, definitely. And just on that note, for anyone that doesn't know, the are supposed to be this summer, like July 23rd to August 8th, but they're saying that they will be cancelled if they can't take place this summer. So I guess if it doesn't happen in summer 2021, we're just going to have to wait for the next Summer Olympics, which is so heartbreaking. No. Like, as a fan, yes, but even worse as an athlete. Um, if you think about it, yeah. I know we were just talking about this last season on the show, but... Think about the athletes who are coming towards the end of their careers, and this could have been their last time to compete. In four years, they might be out of shape or too old for their age category or even just their skill might yeah. have declined, which is just so heartbreaking to think that they might have missed their last chance. Yeah. 
Because even, like, even waiting from the time that the Olympics were postponed to now, Mm -hmm. Leo mentioned, like, how different she is and how much of a personal journey she'd been through. So imagine that for, like, all the other athletes. And imagine if you were kind of, like, you know, edging out of your age category or Mm -hmm. you were almost about to retire, but this was your last Olympics. Like, imagine how long this time period must seem to you and all the uncertainty, too. It's like, is it is it worth this mental game as well? Because athletes, they have to deal with sorry, they have to deal with so much of the mental aspect and I feel Mm -hmm. like when us as spectators or fans when we're watching we're looking more at like the physical aspect and stuff like that but this whole journey for the athletes I think is going to be so much more mental this time than physical but you know I feel like I feel like that's gonna make if these Olympics do happen which I really hope they will I feel like that's gonna make them even more special because yeah I think it's not even gonna be about winning that much I feel like it's gonna be more about like oh we made it yeah like we made it finally like and Mm -hmm. it's gonna be so much more special so I'm really excited and I can't imagine that like it's been a year since lockdown and I struggle sometimes to get out of bed and do something active Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I can't imagine having to get out of bed and train every day for hours and who knows like who knows for how long it's gonna be right Mm -hmm. it could have been a month it could have been I guess it has been almost a year so that must be really hard trying to stay motivated with no idea when you're actually going to be able to go back and compete again well even like leo like leo said like at the beginning of quarantine looking back we were like oh yeah we'll have summer oh my god no no but um yeah leo tried to train on her own like all by herself for four or five hours a day for a month and I I would get so burnt out mentally physically just everything and so I can't imagine what the athletes are going through right now I would be so excited if I was an athlete I'd be way more excited than any of us like as spectators Mm -hmm. or anything like that so I guess that's also a motivator I read something not too long ago about um, Simone Biles and like it came right from her and it was like she was completely prepared for the Olympics last year and she was ready to go, had like all her training was done. She was in great shape. And then now waiting the extra year, she said it completely put a toll on her body. Like she doesn't know how well she'll do and she doesn't know if she'll be able to compete past this. And like she's already like pretty old for a gymnast. I know Elizabeth can vouch for this, but usually gymnasts retire around the age of like 20 and she's like, what, 23 So, you know, in four years, like, she probably won't be in the next Olympics. So if we, if these get canceled, like, she probably won't compete at that level again, which is really heartbreaking because she's definitely one of the best gymnasts to ever do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, that's the thing with sports. I feel like it, especially, obviously all sports got hit hard, but I feel like young sports, like, you know, gymnastics, figure skating got hit really hard because a year in that sport is like five years because um you know it's it yeah I was gonna say it's so physically taxing and also it's like yeah Simone Baz I like 99.9 percent can guarantee that if these Olympics don't happen she won't compete in the next ones and that is sad and your mentality and the psychological aspect of it too like it takes such a toll on you so um yeah I mean it's really sad for those athletes and I mean I just hope these Olympics happen I really do well I'm also excited for all those like new athletes like the new athletes and the new events that are going to be um held like I'm super excited for the freestyle BMX for some reason I'm just like very excited for that I don't know why people jumping on bikes excites me but yeah just thinking about those athletes too and like not even knowing what to expect because they probably haven't been to an olympics um is probably like so like exciting slash nerve-wracking for them yeah i think also the other ones like the new sports i'll just mention them quickly um there's three by three basketball which is going to be interesting because it's a lot more dependent on individual yeah. skill i find when there's less team members then there's freestyle bmx there's a type of cycling and then the permanent events are going to be karate, sport climbing, surfing, skateboarding. And then they're also bringing back oh, softball yeah, and baseball for the first time since 2008. 
So I think all those are going to be really cool to see something fresh and new at the Olympics. I'm so excited for surfing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the rules at all for surfing, but I'm very excited to learn. I think for me, the thing that I love so much about the Winter Olympics is that most of them are dependent on outside factors like the snow. Yeah. So it's not just the athlete controlling their performance. So I think surfing is going to be really interesting for that reason. It makes it a lot more intense. For yeah. Sure, yeah. And I also hate deep water, so it's kind of nerve wracking to watch. <laughs> um, but surfing is also so hard to find places to watch That's it. That's a great point, yeah. Um, unless you have cable, and even then it can be kind of difficult. So I think it's going to be great for the True. athletes to get exposure through the Olympics this summer. Mm-hmm. True. For sure. That's a good point. Like, I wonder in the future if they're going to use, like, simulated waves or something to make it, like, the same for every athlete, you know? Like, have, like, a control. Yeah. Well, they have done that before. I know that also scares me. That's insane that they can do that, but... I guess that would kind of take away, like, the point of surfing, though, because I know that, like, surfers are all about, like, getting the biggest wave. Like, that's part of the that's part of the competition, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I know when I was in grade 12, though, like, I, I took a sports marketing class in grade 12, and we talked about, like, a World Surf League or something like that, mm-hmm. and, like, we actually learned a lot about it, and they did, like, um, had, like, fake waves. They did, like, indoor competitions and stuff like that. So, like, I think it's definitely doable to have this in during the Summer Olympics in other countries when, uh, you know, there's not necessarily ideal conditions for surfing, so Mm -hmm. to speak. I think that's going to be really cool for, like, exposure to the sport, too, because I watched a couple surfing documentaries, and you realize how big it is, like, to the surfing community, you know, like, to certain places around the world, like, where surfing is huge, but... Right. Because you can't surf everywhere, you know? Like, other sports you can literally do anywhere. Like, basketball, soccer, you can do those anywhere in the world. Whereas, like, surfing, it's so... It takes a certain skill set. It takes a certain person with, like, not a certain amount of fear, you know? Like, I just think it's going to be really interesting for the sport itself. And it's also engaging a whole, like, other audience. Because I have a cousin who's from Portugal, and surfing in Portugal is, like, huge. Um... And, like, he loves the Olympics, but, like, never really found that one event that he just, like, was 100% committed to. So as soon as he found out surfing was going to be in it, he was like, that's it. I officially am in love with the Olympics. Like, I loved it before, but now I'm, like, in love with it. Oh, that's so cute. I've been so excited. Like, I'm always more excited for Winter Olympics because of hockey and, like, snowboarding. Like, I'm always just more into the winter sports. But, like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Recently, like, I got into swimming kind of in the last summer olympics and i watched a bunch of the gymnastics as well and Mm -hmm. then my boyfriend loves basketball so he's been talking about the basketball aspect of it and now i'm just like so excited to watch all these different (laughs) sports and if they don't happen i'm gonna be so disappointed well it's gonna be so different yeah yeah. well on like online over the tv but remember there there's gonna be no fans in the stands and everything so that's gonna be super different so i know that there was a survey um out where 80 percent of the japanese citizens that took the survey said that they didn't want the olympics to go on um shout out to aaron dutra rta who wrote that all over my essay yes i was aware that that was a fact um i just wanted to be a little bit different um yeah it'll be super interesting to see what the safety protocols are for the this olympics and i hope that everyone's safe it would be super super heartbreaking if there was an outbreak because i know for the x games i think um mark mcmorris got covid and then um the canadian like men's snowboarding team uh couldn't compete so that would be super super unfortunate if yeah that everyone just wear your masks and be safe we yeah. want the olympics everyone be safe but Anyways, thank you, everyone, for listening this week. We will be back next week with another interview. Um, Awesome. So, yeah, look forward to that. We hope everyone has an amazing week. And thanks for listening, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you.